The views expressed on this Turnbuckle Tabloid live stream or Turnbuckle Tabloid podcast episode do not reflect the views, thoughts, or opinions of the RageWorks brand, including the RageWorks podcast network, RageWorks content partners, advertisers, and affiliates. Viewer and listener discretion is advised. What's going on, everybody? It's your boy, Jay the Red Santee, and just want to let you know that Yes, Oski and I have finally caved in. We've got us up a Patreon. Yes, Turnbuckle Tabloid has a Patreon. Patreon.com forward slash Turnbuckle Tabloid. We've done it. We said, fuck it. If you guys want to be a part of the show a little bit deeper, more in, more in depth, in, in, intense, uh, get more involved in the behind the scenes and be a part of the show in a more intimate and sensuous ways. Why not pay for it? Go to Turnbuckle Tabloid's Patreon at patreon.com forward slash Turnbuckle Tabloid. You guys can be a part of it. Check out the tiers. Things that might be able to fit your needs when it comes to us here at Turnbuckle Tabloid. So guys, please help us out here. It helps us to build the product, better audio, better apps, better programs, and of course, helps us to build us to be a better podcast, although we're awesome as is but still regardless your 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 contribution your contributions your shillings your 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 bits of change could help us to grow here at turnbuckle tabloid so once again patreon.com forward slash turnbuckle tabloid be a part of the extravaganza and the ridiculous and buffoonery that is turnbuckle tabloid join us on social media and as well as all the podcasting outlets and as always enjoy the show Girls, let's go. We got to go to dance. This is Good Dad Angel here. When I'm not taking my girls to dance, I'm listening to Turnbuckle Tabloid. Because I'm a move. Turnbuckle Tabloid. Three, two, one. Hey guys, if you are an up-and-coming artist and you want to share your talents with the world, you know here at Termical Tabloid, we love playing people's music. We do it for anyone who has talent and is inspired to just share their love for music and their passion here at Termical Tabloid. Although we're a wrestling show, we do enjoy our music. Oski and I are aficionados and connoisseurs of good music, so... If you want to play your music on Turbuckle Tabloid, make sure you check us out at Patreon at patreon.com forward slash Turbuckle Tabloid. And you just check out our tiers and just give us some love. And we'll show you love by playing your music to the masses who listen to us here at our little goofy podcast. So if you're a big musician and you just want to share it to the masses, check out our Patreon at patreon.com slash thermal tabloid and um, one hand washes the other and we'll make sure that people hear your talents Turbuckle tabloid cutting a promo before we start that we're gonna make sure we go into a you heard that right yeah yeah yeah, yeah, you yeah. okay yeah, he's um, like, he's he's under the weather. I'm telling you, he's um. God damn, that was like a bad shriek. Yeah, he's like, is he super du- super du- super super engineer super engineer is going through some motions right now. So uh, before we start the cutting a promo, just let's let's start it off with this because pro wrestling is. This is a pro wrestling show. That is funny, brings jokes and loves for all. You like body slams and we like to laugh because we like 
stuff for the back. We love to pull the curtain and pull down our pants. We do suplexes and laugh and laugh. It's pro wrestling, the sitcom. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, it's pro wrestling, <laughs> the sitcom. And starring us believing in this shit. <laughs> what the fuck happens? <laughs> starring all of us, ladies and gentlemen. What uh, the fuck happens when now your favorite wrestling stars are now character comedian actors? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, wrestling has now jumped the fucking ledge now. I can get I can get the skits. I can get the bits. Can you? No, not uh, really. No, <laughs> no, no. Can you? No, but seriously. <laughs> when 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 did all of a sudden I'm watching a wrestling program and friends breaks out? Honestly. Seinfeld, uh, fucking always sunny pops out of nowhere. People being shot. Um... And, and mind you, I'm giving it credit because at least I'm giving you shows that are somewhat funny. Yeah, those are okay, but this. I heard Always Sunny is hilarious. Though. It is funny. Yeah, I got to watch it. It is funny. Um, Danny, De- Danny DeVito is fucking hilarious in it. Uh, it's a great. I, I, lo- I enjoy it. And they do wrestling stuff in there, too. They do. Yeah. Oh, well, the last season was dedicated to pro wrestling. Oh, yeah? Which, by the way, you can't wait to talk about how Disney wants to get into pro wrestling. That's in Wrestling Rundown, but. Uh, oh, Jesus. <laughs> that actually has the, has an intertwine with a, a sitcom, the, the sitcom future of professional wrestling. Uh, so. When did this start? Uh, sitcom, you know. But but before we even start, Red, why did um why did you bring up come up with this kind of promo? There has to be a, there had to be a reason. There had to be a rhyme, a reason. Besides what we see on TV, there's got to be an overhaul of this that made you go, okay, we need to talk about this shit. What did the f- I think was Impact the fucking tidal wave. I think Impact was the one that basically just it just put the nail in the coffin for me, literally, <laughs> when it came to this. And if you didn't watch Impact this past week. Basically, we have a cliffhanger on who shot Johnny, Sw- whatever the fuck his name is. Uh, yeah, him. Who shot Johnny Badass, whatever the fuck it is. I, like, <laughs> <sighs> what are Yo, we doing? T- Tommy what? Dreamer goes on his hands and knees and goes, no! Yes. And he, this is another one who thinks he's hilarious. Like, Dreamer? Yeah, he's another one that th- he thinks and he's is funny. He? Show. No. No. He's really not. He's not. He's the, he's the uncle at every single holiday gathering that must make jokes with the little ones, but they don't laugh back. He's the one that takes his shirt off in the middle of the Thanksgiving dinner, talking about, "Well, I'm full. Time to go to use the bathroom." Yeah, right. Oh, yeah. Uncle Tommy! It's like, no, no, you're fucking. We've been doing it for twelve years. Cut it out. And you're drunk before the cheese and salami was out, and hey. the pre-order appetizers. No, that would be me, actually. That, <laughs> is, that would actually be me. Well. But it, 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 it's, oh, sorry, it's Johnny Bravo. Johnny Bravo. I forgot why didn't it, oh, hold on there, little mama. I, I should have. I should have gotten. Oh, oh. I should have gotten that re- that reference easily. Uh, yeah, it's it's gross. It's gross. It's gotten to a point to where I, I don't even know who this 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 is for. And the, the sad part is that there's people who go it's fucking awesome. People loved it. People thought, oh wow, Impact getting a little uh, edgy, edgy, killing somebody on live television. What Whoa. are you talking about? Uh, uh, um, um, uh, what the fuck? Is Sue Sue Young has been dead. Havoc, <laughs> no, not Havoc. Uh, uh, Rosemary's been dead before. Suppose it was a match like the past couple of weeks that like the winner would bring the fucking manager back from the yeah, dead. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. James Mitchell. Comes James back. Mitchell back from the dead. What the fuck are we doing here, ladies and gentlemen? What are we doing? Are, are we missing? Are we missing wrestling? Yeah, we are. We're getting comedy with a splash of wrestling in it. That's what we get. We got a sprinkle of wrestling now. That's it, what we get. Yeah, it's, it's it's when you go to the when you go to a cantina and you ask for a margarita and it's all tequila, no anything else. Yeah, it's, where's that at? I want to go check that out. It's where's called that? um. <laughs> where's that? John at? Tequila over there near uh, John, uh, near uh, Victory Field. Oh, okay. Yo, they give you ninety nine percent tequila and one percent everything else. I <laughs> swear to God, it's the strongest <laughs> drink I've ever seen. Uh, Jason says, "Listen, I tried to give TNA a chance because you guys said it's getting better, and boy, were you wrong." Yo, oh, oh, oh listen, you yeah. you're not lying. <laughs> he he said like, they got guys that they could put on a good product and they're doing shit like this. You're not lying, sir, and I apologize for steering you down the wrong yeah, way. Yeah, we did. We apologize for that. I apologize, sir. In the words of Jim Cornette, I apologize for referencing anything ever. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry for putting over guys who are going to fuck me over. <laughs> Just like this promotion. Fucked me over. TNA really was... They, and they have a good roster, too. Their roster isn't the problem. They're They're... they're their attempt to be funny during no audience is just a really bad 
attempt. It's now, let me ask you, is, is that what it is? Is it is it because they're reaching? Uh, yes. And, and, and But this is across all yes. po- platforms. Everybody's reaching. Yes. And you know, who I, you know who I have to blame for this? Jesus? Matt Hardy. No. Matt fucking Hardy. And I love Matt Hardy. He's one of my favorite wrestlers of all time. Same name. Uh, Your name is Matt Hardy, too? Yes, Matthew oh. Hardy Olski. Oh, okay. Um, good for you know I love Matt, uh, but I think the 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 final deletion, this whole delete shit, this and Orange Cassidy put this kind of bullshit on the map to be okay. They realized if we get enough views on our YouTube channel, we'll be over. Um, which leads me to this, uh, Red. I gotta ask you this because this has to do with it. This past week, Vince McMahon was on a conference call and they asked for about the viewership. And he and he said it himself. He goes, "It's not all about TV views anymore. It's about getting that million view on YouTube. Those YouTube views add revenue. That's what matters." So let D- me ask didn't you. This. I, didn't I? I've been saying that for the longest. Yes, but I've been saying that for the longest. But if that's necessarily true, the goal of YouTube is to get viral. Do you think these comedy skits are placed to get that kind of YouTube viral or? Do you think they're sacrificing the quality of the product to get over on YouTube and shit like that? No, they're sacrificing the quality of the product just because they could do it because they feel as though that... No, every- Impact can't, though. <laughs> they're really on thin everybody ice, Everybody thinks they're fun. No, they're not. Impact is... That's, I, I, that's what everybody thinks they're no, not. No, they got money, but I'm talking about, like, I'm terms, in terms of, like, they could have all the money in the world, but they're going to be... They, they, they have a consistent shitty product. People are going to stop but watching. But they still survive, though. They always will. They're the... They co- they're, still... They're, they're, they're the they're, cockroaches they're, of fucking wrestling. Yeah, they're the lambs that never get They still killed. survive. But do you think that, that what Vince said about YouTube being important has to do with the fact that they're doing these stupid sketches to clip and put on YouTube? The fact is that, look, everybody, ever, ever since, all right, you, you could blame the Matt Hardy shit, but I could also take it back to ever since Vince started hiring co- uh, comedic writers, he started hiring comedians on the show, you know, and you start intertwining even the, because it, it goes back early times. It goes back, man, you, you know what? Fuck this. Blame the Attitude Era and blame ECW for this shit. Wow, wow. You could even really? go as far as that. Because as soon as your wrestling f- your, your wrestling um, 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 promotion started putting over the fact that your wrestlers could actually be uh, funny and humorous, that's when it was like, oh, we could do this all the time because everybody wants to do, do a DX chop. Everybody wants to um, tell somebody to go suck it. Everybody wants to go... <laughs> suck it. Everybody wants to do that. That's funny. That's hilarious. I think that's cool. Triple H is another one that's a, that, that, that's that's is is a problem in this as well because Triple H he always thinks he's funny. You you see his pro, his his best promos are the promos when he's talking from the heart. When he starts doing fucking um uh fucking Dean Martin roasts on his promos when he thinks he's he's fucking doing a Comedy Central roast of of, of Charlie Sheen against Kevin Steen or or Seth Rollins. That's when it goes to shit. Hell, his fucking Hall of Fame speech going into DX became a fucking roast. They all think they're fun in their whimsical way. They all think that they're funny. Phone lines are open, ladies and gentlemen. Three one five three seven one four three six seven. You are not Phone lines happy. are open. Three one five three seven one four three six seven. Listen, I get it. You have to be entertaining. It's cool. You you could sprinkle in some kind of entertainment when it comes to you know hell you know the, the Santinos was you know had its moments. Um, you had the the moments of the Kiss My Ass Club had its moments. You, you had, uh, um, you know, I'm trying to even think about a moment in WCW when, when things were supposed to be funny. Well, when fucking Je- Jeff Jarrett hit Beetlejuice over the head with the guitar, I don't think it was meant to be funny, but it was fucking hilarious to me. But other than that, like... Oh, my God. What the... When all of a sudden... And it's not... You have a two-hour show. Right. And I swear, we're going to have to moderate this shit. We have to, we're going to have to do some research on this fully. Out of a two-hour show, you get about mm, maybe about an hour and 37, 35 minutes of programming because of commercials and all that. Within that hour and 35 minutes, I'm going to say half of it is about comedy bullshit. Because you don't get a lot. Depending on what show you're watching, because if it's fucking, if it's, if, if it's AEW, you're gonna get a 20 minute match, but you're definitely gonna get a 10 minute fucking comedy sketch. Of course, everybody all the time, man. I think that's the problem. I think the problem um, right now, because listen, this is not new. These comedy sketches aren't new. They haven't been 
they aren't new to our eyes, but the problem is they're becoming more and more acceptable, and I think they're becoming more um, throughout the show is because they're simply just trying to find filler time, and it's a lazy, lazy alternative. It's not even lazy. It's is li- it- For me, it is, because you grab a camera and say, okay, you two are going to pretend you like each other, and you're going to fucking marry Rosemary. All right, three, two, one, go. Dude, everybody, like it's fucking lazy, bro. Everybody thinks they're funny. Everybody thinks that they're a fucking comedian. They're fucking, uh, uh, what you call it, water cooler comedy. And doesn't that offend you? Because, let's just be honest, you're a funny guy, but... You even say, even if you weren't, that's a really big compliment. If someone goes up to you and says, you're a funny person, that's a big deal for a lot of people. So well, I take pride in being that exactly. and people tell me that, that so I'm funny. For, so for everyone to think that they are, isn't that a little offensive? But here, it, it, and that, look, listen, we're, 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 we're a wrestling show, but we also do before we do comedic shit here and there, whatever. Even the skits that we do here, the bits that we do here and all that, I don't think I'm the next fucking coming of Seth Rogen. I'm not the fucking, the, the... The 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 Lorne Michaels of fucking wrestling podcast bits. Half or even most of the shit that we do here is fucking off the cuff, one take bullshit filler that we do. But we do it and just we do it for fun. And we like fuck it, we put it up there. I don't think it's it, it. I listen to a lot of the stuff and I go, that was pretty funny. But a lot of times I go, damn, what the fuck was I doing? But we put it up there <laughs> anywhere because it's filler and it's it, it's just stuff to funny. throw up there. And a lot of stuff people do think it's funny, but I don't. I'm not gonna sit here and. Go on social media and go, dude, guys, you got to check out the bit we did this week on Turbuckle Tabloid where we, we call out Vince McMahon for his buffoonery. You got it. It's the most hilarious thing you'll ever hear. Fucking Jericho and these fucking schmucks go on there and they act like they're... they're Funny. They're, they're, they're fucking town halls and they're fucking... Their dinners, it's like the next coming of, of, of uh, uh, fucking uh, um, Mad TV or some shit. It's horrible. They're trying to treat... Impact and wrestling in general, like the Saturday Night Live during the week, Mon Tuesday Night Live, well Wednesday Night Live. When I when I go into my when I um, but I think it's all about clout though. It could be, but I'll get to that. When I go when I put on wrestling, I don't go to wrestling and go. You know what this needs? This wrestling needs to be funny. <laughs> you know what I watch wrestling for? To watch wrestling. I'm there to watch <laughs> wrestling. Right. Let me tell you something. But it should not always be serious. I mean, no, we're going to go to the clout thing quick. I mean, we're yeah. going I mean, to talk about that. You, 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 you'll, you'll go down that, that avenue. But let me tell you something. If Ring of Honor had the networks as of AEW and WWE, and they would go head-to-head with any of those guys on any day, Ring of Honor would, would outperform them ratings-wise. Because it's People want to watch wrestling. wrestling. Real, real wrestling fans want to watch wrestling. Agreed. Agreed. Real wrestling does. Real wrestling fans do not want want, shit. want to see someone fucking get married, get thrown through, get married, or get thrown through a fucking um an arcade and go, ah, game over. <laughs> <laughs> That's straight from Universal Monsters. Oh god, it's it's fucking ridiculous. I I'm telling you. But but but. Uh, well, when, when 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 was the first time you realized? Oh shit, this is getting bad. This is getting real bad. Indie wrestling. So do you buy indie wrestling for this? Indie wrestling, it it it, it they took no standards. Indie wrestling, I know. Mind you, like I said, WWE is fucking. They're they used to have their moments. They'll have like when they had the the guest host for Monday nights. They'll have their little comedy specials. Like when Bob Barker came out, he did uh, the Price is Wrestling, whatever the fuck it is that he did. The celebrity host, the celebrity host shit. Like they had their moments. Like when Lavar Ball came out. Oh my god, I remember that. That was oh fucking my. awful. That was really bad. I remember that. Awful. That was really bad. Lavar Lavar was terrible. Awful. Even Lon. But didn't he say the N word? I, I, I he probably wouldn't. I no, wouldn't even. No, no, no. Remember Lamelo? <laughs> I can't say it right. He yeah, said, yeah, he said, yeah, he said, he said, get him in, get yeah. him in. Like what? He said, get that N word. Yeah, what? Uh, <laughs> that was a train. Wreck. But this is what I'm saying. Then you, you, you have Vince coming out with the do rag, walking around. Like, what up, my N word? It's like, whoa, shit. It's you, like what? You have those moments, and like I said, you you got. Are those reach trying to connect with different audience members? Yeah, you got Cole Cabana. Cole Cabana is known for comedy wrestling. PWG is you have fucking you got a character named Super Dragon. <laughs> Super Dragon. Super Dragon. Clack, clack, clack. I like him. He was a good wrestler though to back it up though. Yeah, that that, 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 that was a good thing. To say. He was a great wrestler. And then you get promotions like Chikara and all that. They, but that that was their niche. You know what I'm saying? Like Chikara right. was that that was their niche. They were that kind of show. But then now you get the, 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 these indie shows that now feel as though, hey, hey, we could be funny too. Fuck it. 
let's let's bring in um Shecky the clown and now he's he's a wrestler and he'll throw pies in the face of and the pies aren't really pies they're fucking dirt and it, they, they, people love it and whatever the fuck That's it I said, is. throw dirt I mean it's whatever they do the fucking most stupidest things in these shows you you wrestling like, like you know who was it to blame too I blame I blame Japan Japanese wrestling does it but the thing with Japanese wrestling is that a they either a have a promotion that's set around comedic wrestling, yeah, and b they have moments because New Japan would rarely ever do that. Facts. All Japan, uh, rarely would ever do that. Mm-hmm. They don't have. You think Kenny Omega and the Young Bucks were getting a rate with doing the fucking uh, being the elite fucking shows, and, and Japan would have been like, well, what is this? I don't know what, the, what you're doing here. I don't get this. Like, it was like what? They don't. They don't want. They don't. They want their wrestlers to be fucking men and wrestle like men. Lumberjacks. Yeah. Jason blames the blizzard of '94. <laughs> Times have been tough since the snowstorm. He said. Well, I, I blame that as well. I wasn't alive for it, but uh. Yeah. That is, <laughs> was it that bad? '94 uh, had a really bad. It, it was a great football time though. But you know, other than that, it was, it was really bad. <laughs> <laughs> no, but seriously, it you. You lose the the barometer. You lose the 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 feeling of whether or not. You're watching a wrestling show. You know how many people? One of my cousins just recently asked. He, he goes, he, he he recently posted. He said, I, "I feel like watching wrestling again." And I, I he says, "But I need to catch up." I said, "A cheap plug. Um, make sure you listen to my podcast." And B, let's be clear here: <laughs> the wrestling you know from before ain't the wrestling anymore. No, and um, and he's and you're 100 percent right. Uh, I have a friend in the Funko community, Exile, um, Xavier, my my boy. He is binging the WWE Network every day with his girlfriend watching WrestleMania after WrestleMania after WrestleMania. And the one thing he told me was, when did it stop getting serious? Yeah. I'm like, what do you mean? He goes, I cared when Dragon Steamboat fought Flair. I cared when feuds mattered back in the day. He goes, I, I turned on AW last week. He goes, why are we fighting over an arcade machine? He even said, and he has been away from the wrestling game for years. And he go, he even told me, he goes, I need to collect the WWE pops. I'm like, really? He goes, yeah, the old school ones when they actually fucking cared about their product. I'm like, yeah. It's, 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 he it's, is disgusted with the new program. He goes, he goes, back then people used to care because the feuds mattered when uh, it got personal. He goes, now people are fighting over arcade machines and and fucking, like, and confetti and pancakes. And he goes, what the fuck is going on? Well, you mentioned cloud chasing. And it's, that's what, that's a lot, what it's all And a lot of indie wrestlers has gotten into, into cloud chasing. Of course it is, because if Vince McMahon said it himself, YouTube views matter. I'm sorry. Back before YouTube wasn't popular, you know how people got popular on YouTube? By smashing things over their head, doing that jumbolo sh- juggalo bullshit. And I think wrestling companies are trying, are trying to take suit. I mean, look, like what? And, and they're fucking ruining their content doing so. Motherfuckers had a social distancing match. Like what the? They fuck? They didn't even touch each other. What they did. the <laughs> fuck is what? And you know what's if crazy? If that's not pulling the curtain, I don't know what is. This fuck. This this era of wrestling is basically set around stoners and fucking lunkheads who who really sit around, get high all fucking day, <laughs> play video games. Laugh hysterically at fucking uh, um, uh, 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 fucking uh, pimple popping videos, right? And enjoy the fact that um, their fucking favorite cereal just came out with a new chocolatey flavor. <laughs> well, I, I, I can play devil's advocate right now, and say, and I want your re- your opinion on this one because some people in the community in wrestling do say, "Hey, the curtain's already pulled. Why not take advantage of that curtain being pulled and use it to our best advantage to make best entertainment possible?" No, because. Some companies, some indie shows say that. They're like, listen, we all know what it is. Vince pulled the curtain a long time ago, so but now why? we're taking advantage of but it. But why? 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 And, and, People are saying it gives us an opportunity to <laughs> gain more viewers with clout on YouTube and shit. The conversation that we had with um, Jim Fix this week, he, asked, he, he even asked me, and you'll you hear it in an interview, he asked me, um, what do you think should what, what could happen to change wrestling? And I told you, it, it's that phrase, the toothpaste is out, of the, is out of the tube. But there's a way to still have some kind of... Um, Connection to where I want to watch this and still believe that there's heat and there's wrestling and there's competition. There's a bill to be better. Nobody wants to be the best, and it's like um, and and this is of course you guys know I'm an old fuck, but it's back in the days to where and and Josie's boy's watching right now. Yep. Back in the days, and he said simply because you can doesn't mean you should. Right. 
back in the days, and Josie Boy will tell you, when and rap, rap was about being the best. You get on the mic, it was talking about who could rhyme the best. Right. Who's the best rapper at that time? You know what I'm saying? You had guys who the first thing they'll do is grab grab the mic and I'm I'm uh, I'm from California and I'm uh, California's out there out in the West. But when I grab the mic, I am the best. The first thing they'll do is to talk about how great they are. Ego trips. They, wrestlers don't even do that anymore. Nope. Everybody's talking about now how I guess how over they are, but not saying it directly. They they are actually just looking at you and and saying, you know, uh, hey. Listen, I I come in this ring and I I'll, I'll beat the crap out of anyway. By the way, follow my Twitch and um, yeah. it's like what the what are we doing I, here? If you want to hear how great I am, follow me on Patreon. Like, <laughs> it's like what? It, it, there's no more greatness here. What up, Ben? Mook. Um. Mook. It's it's um. It's alarming. It's a mm. it's a lost art to the fact of not being able to to put together wrestling shows that don't listen. There's always a fucking intermission. There's always a a a a, a curtain jerker that riles up a crowd. But when the whole show is basically is basically sketch comedy, listen, I can't even go through an AEW show without somebody thinking they're fucking hilarious. Every segment they think they do. They everybody, do. everybody. Which I will say, um, which by the way, Tony says yes. The public believes perception and not actual talent, which is a hundred percent true. And then. Um, I think the storyline who's doing who's doing what you said perfectly in terms of like I still want to believe there's heat is the Roman Reigns family storyline. But this thing, people are afraid to do it. You know why? Because they think that doesn't draw an audience anymore. It does though. They, it they, really they think does. that there's no compelling storyline. Like, well, it's cool. you know, they really they they're really not mad at each other. I don't see Roman or or, or the Usos on any on each other's social media these past couple of weeks. No, because the only time that you see them is because. They do like old photographs saying, this is how it used to be, what's happening now. Yeah. They're trying to sell it. Yes. They're trying to sell it. They're trying to. But now it's like, people, uh, you, you know he was at his barbecue last week, right? He's like, I don't want to hear that shit. I'd rather, you know what, it's funny, I'd rather hear that than hear the fact that uh, fucking Jericho and MJF are now going to do a road trip in a fucking car and make stop-offs and, and do fucking skits at diners and, and doing bullshit like that for... for, for for entertainment purposes. By the way, like, no. AEW loves exposing the business. Let me tell you that. They're really like, they're both wall breakers all the wall. Oh, all yeah. Way through. But that's another thing to tell you that, listen, I don't give a fuck if you think wrestling is fake or not. But that's, that, that's their excuse. Vince Vince said it out loud years ago, so we could take advantage of that, right? But you know no. who's you know at fault at that too about AEW as well? All of these has done this. You've, you've based a fucking show on YouTube, which by the way, if you guys watch uh, um, Being the Elite, more power to you because I, I swear to you, I watched maybe I watched three episodes, two or three episodes, and I wanted to throw my fucking phone. Well, because last, last week was the Dark Order Halloween party. This is what I'm talking <laughs> about. This is what I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah that was the this other, is what I'm the Dark Order Halloween party. Why am I supposed to take this group seriously? You're supposed <laughs> to be a dark, brooding. <laughs> Evil empire energy that comes to this fucking promotion to take over everything, and you're fucking doing Halloween parties. Yeah, it's no, it was a Dark Order Halloween party, and Tony Khan was there. It's like fucking <sighs> Tony. Oh my god! And, and, and now, <laughs> now Brody Lee's not Gargamel from fucking Smurfs. He, he's, he's 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 not even fucking scary anymore. No, he's not. Um, Slick Slick's giving a lot of love to the J uh, Jimmy Uso and uh, Jimmy J and Roman Reigns. Um. Storyline right now. Ben saying it's still real to me. Damn it, it's hard for me to, to make it to believe it's real anymore. Honestly, Ben. Um, Even I, if it's not real, at least make sell, me sell it. Sell it. Sell it. The, wh- the biggest wh- fucking con man is running our country right now, but he's selling it, and there's fucking assholes who believe him. Right. And he's a and he's another one who thinks he's funny. He's a fucking dickhead. I think there's no difference. Um, this is like if people on Broadway in the middle of um The Lion King, Simba comes on the screen and goes. This is all a hood. <laughs> I'm John. <laughs> the circle of life. I'm John. <laughs> and then he puts it back on and goes, view me. <laughs> it's like, no, fam. It's, it's like, no. They, it's like before they start Phantom of the Opera, the guy pulls out the mask and goes, listen, you know, this is not a real uh, implementation of what happens in real life, but I just want to let you know. So I'm going to get on stage right now, and we're going to sing a couple of songs. Some of you might love it. Some of you might know. I'm going to do a little dance in here, but I'll put this mask on, and you're going to be like, ooh, he's scary. It's like, no, d- just sell me the fucking product. Do, 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 do Penn and Teller tell you their tricks? No. Exactly. 
and you wrestlers shouldn't either and shouldn't and, and Broadway performers shouldn't either. It is it is a fucking lost art to keep things to themselves. And to be honest, this is why wrestlers say to this day, the locker room ain't even a special place of worship no more. It used to be. Everybody see that's the other dead. thing. But it's, it's the other dead. thing too. It, Everybody thinks that they're funny. They think that they're, they're funny. not. Listen, I've been dying to do stand up for the longest. You I, attempted I, it once. I attempted it once. I, I'm, but I'm dying to do it in a in a club, do an open mic. I've been dying to do it, and, I, and I'm, I'm going to. I'm going I to. Be, I will be there one day. I, and I'm going to. Yep. But I'm going to do this because I don't. I I I know that I'm funny, but you got to put it out there to see whether or not a mass audience believes it's funny. I don't believe a lot of these people think that this shit that's happening in wrestling now is funny. I think they're I just... I know I don't. They're shocked by it. I think they're like... The real wrestling fans, true wrestling fans, sit back and they go, the f- fuck am I watching? Yes, for the most what part. What is this? For example, the Jericho and MJF music scene that led the, 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 the dinner to the champion bullshit with, with the whole music um, scene. Even Jim Cornette said, he goes... These two guys are so talented, and they're wasting it trying to be funny. Your goal, you are being paid to not be funny. You're being paid to perform and entertain and be a good in-ring performer and to get your and to, and to be over. That's why you're being paid, not to get laughs. I'm sorry, this is not Monster Zinc where we generate laughs here, okay? I love the movie. I love Monster Zinc, but WWE and AEW don't fucking collect their checks by how many screams they get in the fucking bin. Oh, right? my God, dude, you don't even know. I, I <laughs> Like, honestly... I don't, I don't, I don't, I sit there and I try to, I try to put together, New Day, I love New Day, those are my people and everything, I love what they've done for the business, they've yeah, been, they've helped whatever. a lot, but I'm gonna be honest with you guys, a lot of them shit is not funny, most of they're them they're not weren't. funny, you know what, most of the time you, you and me look at each other go, uh, okay, whatever, we see what they're trying to do here, you know what's the best thing about when per, a person is funny, when they're trying not to be funny, <laughs> yes, when someone is naturally, oh, it's natural, and it's natural, when it's, it just comes out naturally, when a snarky remark here or a smart comment there or an observational thought comes out here and there, that's when shit is funny. Yeah, when it's gen- when it's general. Uh, when gener- you're when sitting there yeah. pining, around, uh, I swear to God, that Jericho and fucking MJF segment, I swear to God, they had to be in the back like, that. yo, dude, you know it'd be fucking hilarious, man. We became Brian and Stewie. And I'm just watching fucking TMC, right? And I'm watching Bob Hope and Bing Crosby do <laughs> White Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> we should do that. <laughs> The crowd will fucking love it, man. And actually, MJF probably turned around and said, "What the fuck are you smoking?" I cannot wait for him to leave AEW one day, like years on the road, and go, "Yeah, I didn't like that at all. That sucks." I can't <laughs> be honest, right? Be like, honest. This shit sucks. Bullshit. This was. Because I'm pretty sure MJF said a year ago, he goes, "I'm not singing anymore. I'm, I will not sing on TV. I, I'm not intertwining both things." And they definitely conned him. Which, by the way, shame on you, Jericho, for using your popularity and your clout in this business to get people to do things they don't want to do. I guarantee you he didn't want to do that shit. And I guarantee you most of the things you did on Orange Cassidy he didn't want to do. But because you're Jericho, they'll agree to it because they respect you. Fuck you, bro. I love you, Jericho, but you're getting real old. Right. And, and Josie Boy, he, he nails it perfect. The public has to deem you funny. It's just like you can't say you're charismatic. Right. You have to, the you have to crowd has to tell you you're funny. And these days... The majority of people I see that says that like these segments that's in wrestling right now are funny, are fucking they're they're out of the fucking they're stone they're, they're new age stoners that don't fucking really know what funny is. Yeah, no, they don't. They don't know what real funny is. They just they just like to see something. Oh, it's just because it's the new age of, of wrestling. Just because it's new doesn't mean it's fucking good. Try new coke. People hated that shit. <laughs> Thought it was awful. It was a bonanza. JD, uh, grant, granted, Jericho's the goat, but you know what? His, his fucking his, his 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 shine as a legend and the greatest of all time is about to get dull with the bullshit that he's doing. Let me tell you who's doing goat shit right now. Fucking Daniel Bryan is doing goat shit right yep, now. Yep, he really. Uh, and which, by the way, you um, want to talk about putting motherfuckers over? But he did this past or what well, he did this past Friday night on SmackDown yep. is fuck, and that's how you're supposed to put people over. Well, he is a producer officially now. Yeah, but. So he and 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 that's and that's how your mentality should be, especially at um you know, his his age and all that stuff. You know, your goal is to put other people over. You have to pay back the company, not just care about yourself. And I think Jericho, uh, he's <laughs> trying, but uh, it's funny. Uh, uh, Josie Boy is like, I think I'm hilarious, but I don't tell people I'm funny when I describe myself. No, I do it as a joke. You shouldn't. I do it as a joke when I go and I be like, yeah, I'm a funny motherfucker. But you do that as a jest, like you do it as a joke. I don't put that in in in. Than headers. I don't the only put that people in. who can tell you no. you're funny is other people. It's other people. Like people tell you you're charismatic. Yeah. You don't say I'm a charismatic individual. 
You sound like an ass when you do that. J- um, let's get a few comments in here. Um, Jason says, well, Jericho's the fucking goat. Yeah, he is the goat, but he lately he's been the fucking... The sheep. The sheep. <laughs> oh, the bi- <laughs> it's like he's been horrible. He's been the billy goat, and he's been the one who... Th- oh, we got a call. Yeah, I, I don't understand this. This Chumoko Tabloid, who's this? What's up, Jay? What's up? Marco, Marco! Moo! Are you alive, Marco? Marco, <laughs> why do why do you sound like you flew, like you all the way in Mexico? Oh, wait, because you, you are. I'm sorry, are. I'm sorry about that. Um, Can barely hear you, Marco. Let me see something. All right, talk now. <laughs> I, I said it, man. There How we you go, doing, guys. Hey, what's going on, Marco? Marco, Mexican wrestling has seen their fair share of, uh, I guess, comedic moments, but is it? It's not as much as American wrestling, is it? Try to. <laughs> they try to be funny? No. Like, things like what you're talking about, what, what um, and my my favorite wrestler, yeah, right? Uh, MJF and Jericho did? Right. No, we don't do that here. <laughs> but this is what I'm saying. Like, the, I, I, I think it goes by territory where, per, where people pretty much get an understanding that, like, we want our wrestling. I don't need to see. I mean, you probably get your 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 comedic wrestler here and there as a gimmick wise, but you don't see it on on uh, on a whole event, a whole show. Mexico doesn't do that. No, man. That was like I was I was seeing it because uh, you know, what the hell is wrong with these guys? Are they trying to do a musical or what? And that was like so crappy and wow. Wow, I didn't believe Jericho was doing that. I would have got it if he was in with the Boss Plosky, Ruth, yes, the Rockers. I was like that. Come on, man. He's better than that. He's doing that. Can you imagine if La- MJF, Can you imagine if La Parka and fucking... Now you fucking... know why I don't like MJF. Now you know why, because he's willing to go... No matter what else can say, he's defending him. I know that. But I'm surprised by this, Marco. This is not in MJF's character. Even Jim Cornette said it. He goes, wow. Me believing MJF would do this is like me believing that that uh, that fucking... Um, that that Ruth Runner's reindeer really fucking flew or some shit like that. Like, no. It, it's hard to believe that he actually did this on his own chime, okay? He usually is not known for doing this shit. So this is, this is hard for me to believe. Can you imagine... Can you imagine if La Parca and Juventus Guerrero just started... Singing out of nowhere, and I was like, Yo voy a romper la cara. Tu no eres un luchador como mi. Like, what the fuck? Like, where the <laughs> fuck would that come from? This isn't Disney sing along. This is wrestling. Which Marco, we. I, 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 what the fuck? This, no. this, this, this was saved for. This, no, this, no, 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 stop it, stop it. Marco, no, no. This, Marco, this was going to be saved for wrestling rundown, but because you're here, I have to I have to talk about it real quick because this has to do with comedy, and you are our lucha libre expert. Lucha! Um, What are your thoughts on the possible. Like, there is a rumor. It's not a rumor, actually. This is actually almost confirmed here. Uh huh. Marvel and Disney are investing in a professional wrestling lucha libre show for Disney Plus Ooh. and for maybe Fox, and every lucha character will be based on a Marvel character. What are your thoughts on that oh one? Oh my god! Oh, oh, you have to fuck that up, please! Oh my god! You know what? Uh, Disney Plus and Marvel 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 innovate and I say like real 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 sarcastically but that no it's known for that. It's known for that because we don't know how to put see how to get people to notice now because there's a lot of promotions, small promotions that they're going way up because of doing like Lucha Cosmo. Guys coming with their cars and seeing the the Lucha uh, the Lucha match. You know what? Know what to do let me anymore. tell you. Let me yo, tell you. Yo, yo, hold on, wait. Slick, oh, <laughs> Slick said Marco's mics up his ass. <laughs> yeah, because I, I had to raise up his volume. That's what it was. <laughs> Marco, 
I, I don't listen when it comes to like that. I know what their 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 target is. They're targeting the kids. They're trying to do that. I get that. Lucha, I, lucha, lucha. Yeah, I get that. Plus WWE is doing a um a, a lucha. I think the, the, a Funko Pop uh, thing. I think. Well, that's what it's based off the show. Right, right, right. So I I understand that. But when we when we're when we're turning around and all of a sudden. We have our Mexican wrestlers. We have uh, we, we have like uh, uh, um, Sin Cara and fucking Mi Macara breaking out in a Cantifla fucking segment or a, a, a Chesperito kind of fucking segment. It's like, come on, no, no man, what, this is all this is wrong. <laughs> but, uh, you know what, man? I mean, oh my god. But Marco, as you know always, what, we, right now, right, we, we're in another different place with all this, and you know what? Um, all they're doing is stuff with the Funko Pops and all that was the same. Yeah, <laughs> but those Funko Pops came out way before these guys um, you know, brought this up. But you know what? Uh, it is what it is, man. <laughs> all right, Marco, as always, thank you for calling in. From Mexico, senor, how's it going over there? How's everything over there? How's all the, the pandemic and all that? Is everything cleaning up? Yeah, man. But, you know what? They're doing the uh, best to handle this up right now. I'm telling you right now, there's in, there's like a mall shop here in Mexico. They're doing. They just did a tribute to Damian Saint Saint Saint. I don't know if you know that. Guy, you know that the luchador. It, it's been almost 38 years uh, doing lucha. Uh huh. He, 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 he has got a, a um. He just got a, like a trophy or recognizing his career. And you know what? They're doing right now in the Vegas. And in all the things, you know, we're trying to do a lot of stuff here. And Lucha right now is like uh, doing a lot of stuff too. But we're waiting for next year, man. Yeah, no. you know what, guys? Happy no. Halloween to you guys. Happy Halloween, happy, happy All Saints, happy, happy uh, Dia de los Muertos, whatever it is that they do in Mexico, man. Thank you for everything. Yeah, man. Yeah. Marco, hey, g- give me a ha ha ha. Give, ha. Phone, give us a ha <laughs> 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 I, I I'll try. I'm gonna say that's almost borderline racist that we say that. (laughs) (laughs) He started. I know, I know. (laughs) But fuck it. Yeah, but before we wrap this up, gotta say that I I miss I miss my wrestling. I really, really do. I miss wrestling. I so much miss where I could watch a wrestling match. And not have to worry about if someone is going to um, break out in song, break out in song, or if there's going to be a prop that's used for somebody to fall on their face into a pit of mud, or if everything just boils down to whether or not we could uh, have a, 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 a egg stone in our head. Those, those kind of things. I miss those segments. I miss those. Can I get wrestling back, please? You know what? I, you know what? I, you know what I miss? Not being lied to. Because AEW was the was the was the we're gonna be like sports. And thank you. And that and I don't, I, I forgot that I, that's what I was gonna go with. AEW. Close it off like that. Thank you with the the promise that we were supposed to be all about sports. The sports feel. The no, you, you lied, lied to us. Unless unless I'm watching the NFL and every time they kick the football, confetti from flies out of the football, or they do the Charlie Brown, uh, uh, um, Lucy moved the ball out the way before he kicks a field goal. Uh, no, that's not what sports is. But whenever I hit a baseball, fucking, I get a, 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 a baby reveal. I get a gender reveal going on. No, that's not happening. Or every or every time we shoot a basketball out of nowhere, fucking a clown runs it. Oh, hold on. That's a Harlem Globetrotters. Wait, no, we whoa, can't do that now. Whoa. That's different. Uh, but still, you know what I'm talking about. Uh, about, uh, about. We're about to go. Hold on. You just called in on the time. Terrible tabloid, who's this? Yeah, it's Ben from England. How are we doing, guys? Ben DeBrid, what's going on, sir? Ben! Actually, just sat down from coming back from a football match. So, hello. I thought I'd come say hi. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Um, yeah. Did it, During the football match, did, 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 did a clown run on the field and start juggling in the middle of it? Uh, no, because that's just a stereotype. We're not allowed to do that as we are still in lockdown. So, that's... No, <laughs> not do that anymore. Did um during the football match did um did somebody uh basically break out in a comedy routine right before the striker attacked the 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 the, the, the opposing the opposing field? Oh, I love, I love <sighs> how shit knowing anything related to. Something. 
Sorry about that. My dog is in pain yeah. right now. I think he has arthritis. Yeah, they burst out into Morris dancing when we scored. Yeah, that's what we did. Oh, okay. Because and, and let me tell, and let me tell you, you guys in England are probably the best audience when it comes to wrestling, or probably anything ever. You guys are, are amazing, but you also respect the craft as well. You guys mm-hmm. respect the work. You you also know when to 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 come in with your songs, your banter, your 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 quirky remarks about something. You 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 have a lot of you Brits have great comedic timing. Yeah, we are, are you are, are you, an absolute, absolute pisser. Yeah, are, <laughs> are you one of those that are you are, are you enjoying this comedy aspect of wrestling? No, <laughs> I mean I don't I don't I don't mind it every now and again, but it's every week on most shows that I watch. Right. Like it, it depends. It depends what kind of sense of humor you got. Because I mean, I don't know if any of you guys watch Impact, but they've still got like the characters from the Wrestle House, which is so shit, it's funny, which I think that's what they're going for. So I think that's aimed at, like, people with ridiculous sense of humor like me that laugh at farts and stuff. Right. But then, like, the Le Champion dinner debonair bullshit, it just wasn't funny. Right, it just reminds so, me, it, it like, reminds it, me of, it reminds me of a lot of Vince McMahon's humor because he's a fart and, 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 and shit kind of guy. He likes that kind of... Uh, Comedy, he like the Natalia running around farting during segments and stuff like that. It's, I don't, I don't get it. I don't get it. Time and place for it, I think. And I think a lot of the attitude here was a lot of comedy stuff. You know, like as much as you know, I do. I, I mention a character every week, Naked Midian, ridiculous character, <laughs> stupid, yeah. never going to get over it. But people remember it because it's so fucking stupid. Uh, th- for me, there is a time and there's a place for comedy and wrestling, and the people that do it have got to be funny. Whereas, like uh, the people like the Young Bucks, they're not funny, um, and other people that are supposed to be funny, they're just they're just not funny. And I also think the society that we live in, where everyone's offended by anything that anybody says ever, makes it hard to do comedy as well. Yeah, that is uh, true. No way, yeah. there's no way you could get away with half of the shit that the Attitude Era got away with now in these day and ages, you know, especially when you have Vince McMahon saying, what up, my... Yeah, know, and, but that's, and, and that's, that's the thing that upsets Keep me now. And that's the thing that upsets me about the whole comedy aspect because it's so hard to be funny these days. You should steer away from it. Just stick to the sport. Stick to what it, If you're going to have your little moments here and there, I get it. Don't give me a 45-minute rest of a, a comedy skit when it's a wrestling show. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but um, but nice. I gotta I, I gotta let you go. I gotta let you go quick because I have to deal with my dog. It looks like he's dealing with arthritis, so I gotta let you go. But uh, we'll we'll get on. We'll chat in a sec. All right, guys. Yeah, it's cool. All right, later. Later, love, dude. Yes. Oh. All right, guys. When we come back, we have much more in store. We have also um on this episode we have Jim Fix who's stopping by. He's going to discuss. Um, what brought him into podcasting? Why did he want to do a podcast that's very um, anti Howard Stern? Quite frankly, a Howard Stern podcast, but also his discussion about Canadian wrestling. Talk about Montreal, uh, Vancouver, Quebec, all those areas in Canada, and also he has a a funny Stu Hart Dungeon Family story that he knows personally well. Where I've heard rumors of this, and it was actually brought up on. Uh, I believe it was auto wrestling this week. So guys, don't go anywhere. Stick around. We will return. Check you guys in a sec.
well because uh, like me, that's, that we don't use our real name. We don't really use our real name. Where the gimmick name come from? I don't. I don't. Would well, do you want to be just Jay? Well, it's fine, Jay. Yeah, Jay's fine. Yeah, you can do that. Yeah. Okay, I'll just call you Jay yeah. for the purposes of this broadcast. But just because I don't know you as Jay on the Facebook I know, page, I know. so that's that. Yeah, it'll come back yeah, anyway. <laughs> But uh, no, I just don't want to. Like Sam doesn't mind being her. You know, for like, well, when you look like that, you shouldn't worry too much about it. But in this <laughs> creepola fucking world, do you really want your your mug out there? Unless, I mean, if if it's what if it's part of what you do, it's not that I have any lack of pride or whatever in what I do. I would show my face. I'm not embarrassed by it. But um, the I've got a school that might not appreciate the language that we use <laughs> or if they found out that I was doing a show like this. So uh, you want to be gainfully employed and you don't want this in your, you know, following you sometimes if you use potty mouth or whatnot. So yeah, I think I've got, you never I, want to get me too. I think I've come to the, the the point of my life where I've just be, be, frankly just they don't give a shit. <laughs> I don't really care. I have a, I have a city and, job and, with a union. I don't think they give a fuck what I do. <laughs> I well yeah I think certain certain yeah I, th I think it depends also what where and what you where you're where you're on what you're doing because uh, yeah anyway but yeah uh, yeah you see I, it ties everything up to back to wrestling because as um as we as we met along the ways due to our, our love for or, or our hate for Howard Stern uh, yeah. wrestling also com comes into play which is uh, the basis why uh, you're basically here on the show but <laughs> everything could tie in <laughs> but you know I I, I we were discussing uh, this week's uh, this past episode where um, gimmick wise, it seems like wrestling has lost its last icon with John Cena now going to the movies and such being mm -hmm. now a, an entertainer in your days of watching wrestling. Of course, Hogan was the big icon. Uh, mm -hmm. who, who else was in, in, in your eyes was, was very iconic in, in, in wrestling. Do you mean in terms of what what kind of success they had outside of wrestling, or in everything terms of... like that? Just that that if they didn't have if they didn't have that Hulkamania type of thing, who was close to it right. or had that kind of barometer of being on that precipice of breaking out? Well, I mean, Hogan was so over. It was funny the way people described him. It was it was almost as if it was like manifest destiny. He could not not make it because he was so huge. He was he had a great look. He had almost like the prototypical look. Uh, and he was made to look like <laughs> you remember remember those uh, coin op games like um, Matt Mania and um, you know like like wrestling oh my these wrestling you are video dating, games man. you are dating it so much that you just said it and that's probably one of my favorite games to play Matt Mania I'm actually Golden for Hulk it. Yeah, Golden Hulk and exactly. you know what was it you know they had like a road where they also had a kid Dynamite Tommy who was clearly the Dynamite kid yeah exactly and and um and it was like uh, he was. Taylor made for for greatness, but I mean at that time, um, God, they were all they were all such icons, man. They were huge. They all had a look. They all had um, their own gimmick. I mean, Rick Rude was was like clearly meant to be a star. Razor Ramon later on, like perfect perfect gimmick. It, it, right. It, it it almost looked like that's what men was supposed to look like. The men, sure. Like, it was of manly. Course. Manly, uh, either you had a hairy chest or you were just 260 pounds of just ripped muscles or, or, or that, yeah. or that barrel look like Bruno was. Bruno had that barrel <laughs> even look. Though, <laughs> even though most guys look like an earthquake instead. <laughs> but, um, I mean, I mean, you know, there's certain, and my favorites back then were, uh, I, when I was younger, I liked the baby faces because they did all the high flying stuff most of the time, most of the time. Mm. And then, but then like when it came to heels, it was, who was the best talker? The best talker was usually the most fun, no matter what they did. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. But, I mean, after Hogan, there really was – I mean, Macho Man eventually got his good push. I mean, he was he was amazing performer, incredible performer, and um, it deserved what he got. And he was as iconic, I think. Jake the Snake was just as iconic without a belt. Um, and did you ever hear that story that Jake was saying about he was supposed to get his push with Hogan, but – they were all chanting DDT when he was fighting Hogan, <laughs> and, and they said we can't have this because you're gonna out you're gonna overshadow Hulkamania, and that's a billion dollar industry. No man, you're you you're a guy like me. We love to shoot interviews, and um, oh, my my goodness, them. Jake is probably the best shoot interview you could ever sit down and listen to. I mean, he'll go from funny and to depressing to uh, 
just uh, it, it, his his just the way he speaks, that his tone draws you in, and it's almost Hands like down. it's almost like if your your uncle or your grandfather is lulling you to sleep, but yet you oh, don't yeah. want to go to sleep yet because you're trying to wait to, to, to hear that climactic moment in the conversation. Yeah, well, I mean, the last the last conversation we had, what we were discussing, I was discussing about how beyond the mat, that one little monologue where. I mean, I know Jake doesn't think much of it probably because he was, you know, shown to be in, in the pits of hell and in drug addiction at the time. Uh, but he does that one he does that one monologue where he explains and there's just a voiceover where he talks about his sex life on the road and how it fucked with his marriage. Right. And he could have been Marlon Brando. He could have been, you know, anybody. He could still I'm, that's why I'm surprised he never managed to parlay that into like a Sam Elliott type character in the movies. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? He could have he could have been a character actor for so many like you know uh, action films or some kind of like espionage film something because he clearly has the talent and he the delivery as you said anyway but uh, that's neither here nor there you guys are listening to a conversation with a a, a man who I, I i've i've now grown to have a friendship with uh, across the pond across the the, the the great plains of this earth uh, found each other due to our love hate for a man we once listened to and possibly admired at one time, uh, the so-called self-imposed king of all media himself, Howard Stern. And as you guys listen to this show, you guys know that a lot of stuff I've I, I do here and also I've probably emulated, but also I've, I've drawn reference to hell. Oski is called the Robin Quivers of our res our news segment, so <laughs> I make sure it's known that this, I, as, <laughs> I make it I make it known that listen, I'm the host, you're the co-host, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> but does my, he have somebody else getting him the news articles? Uh, yeah, no, at, at least he, he runs and he actually gets the news articles right. Uh, 99, Perfect. 90, 98 percent of the time. But uh, our guy, Jim Fix, Phil Moore Fingers sitting in here with us here for, uh, quite frankly, the Howard Stern podcast. And why a Howard Stern podcast? I mean, I, I, I got to tell you. I'm in a world where there's like thousands upon thousands thousands of wrestling podcasts and everybody's just crabs yeah. in a barrel pulling each other down you found your niche with getting this podcast up and running and basically gravitating and getting an audience that is i don't know whether you knew felt the same that you and your lovely and very very pretty but also very funny <laughs> coals sam you guys uh and shout out to raven as well raven when she comes in she's also great as well um how did you guys know that this was going to be something that m may may get over with with listeners well well we had our gimmick worked out we had i got the brass knuckles and the in the, the jock and that no you went to grab think, the brass uh, ring brother <laughs> <laughs> exactly. No, it was um, well. We all met at the same place, Radio Gunk, and uh, those guys. Radio, Radio Gunk for a long time was the only game in town. It was like, um, uh, you know, I don't know. The, it was a lone McDonald's in truth or consequences. You know, um, <laughs> it, it, you just you had no options. And they and it was punk rock radio. That was the way we used to call it. And but the thing is, it never improved. And for a while there. Um, we wanted more content out. Sam and I did. We got to be uh, friends through there and Raven as well. And we would just, you know, message each other. Hey, what do you think about this bid? We think, what do you think about doing a show about this? Do you think they'd like it? Do you think we could put it to them? Because I've been responsible for uh, like a sub show over at Radio Gunk called um, Radio uh, Radio Geek. It was all about like, you know. Uh, the comic movies or, you know, sci-fi movies when some guy wanted to talk about or TV shows that were that, you know, related to that mm. fantasy or whatnot. And uh, so I'd already had sort of an in there and I said, well, why not? So we put one together. It got a lot of great uh, reviews. It was about Johnny Carson versus Howard Stern and yes. his hatred of late night hosts because he couldn't get a late night gig to save his life. And um, the rest was history. We knew we had some kind of chemistry. And then over time, we decided, let's go and do our own thing. We can put it out when we want, how we want, as much as we want. And, and we can have total quality control. And we can do like post-production and make it sound better than, than the competition. And we have. And that's what people, are, the one, the people, the, the unifying concept Everybody's saying the same thing. You sound, you guys sound so much better. It's so much professional, more professional. I'm like, there's not much to it. You just be regular, be real, and even though I'm fake, <laughs> using a fake name, but be <laughs> real in in the in the in the effort. I mean, make sure you're 100% going for it. And we we work together. 
if she, she Sam doesn't like an idea or Raven doesn't like an idea and I don't or whatever, we just won't do it. There's no we don't have to bullshit each other. And I think it works. You can hear the the what chemistry on the on the thing when we do it together. Yeah, I I, I found you guys. I, I was one of those. I, I was uh scratching along the YouTube highway looking for old clips of Stern since I I, I stopped listening to him maybe about five or six years back, and yeah. I, I I was just pining for the the old ways of the show. And uh, I came across Gunk, and when I heard a group of individuals talking about the shows of now and you know, at times they would go back, and I and I would go, "Wow, it's 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 almost like I I found I found salvation with with, with those who felt like me. <laughs> I was I was wandering in the desert of lost sternisms in a stern way of life, and I found it. But as as you as you and I, I mind you, I did a I did I I, I listened to old shows, and I I heard you and Sam coming in and such, and after a while, yeah, you, you started noticing that. Things weren't changing, and then to be honest, things were getting worse. And then when I heard you guys separated, especially the the Johnny Carson episode, I thought it yep. was so telling because I too was the same. Where I said, "This guy really hates talk show hosts because he never got to be one." Absolutely, it, it, it was painful. And then you guys elaborated into such, and which is which is great too because you guys don't only do. Um, I mean, you guys chime in and do your your, your weekly checkups on, on, on episodes that's happening on this week. Which Raven is 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 a, is a gem for that because I don't know how she she could punish through, punish herself through that. She's almost <laughs> it's a, she must be into say, like sadomasoch masochism on the low. I don't know, but you you guys also do your deep dives and you guys look into yep. deeper stuff. Like this recent uh this recent uh, this week's recent episode was the Fatigue Foundation. And that's right. Holy crap! How long do you think you guys are gonna really? <laughs> beat this down because that that's a that's a long pilgrimage for you guys well to to lay a little groundwork for your listeners who are you know would rather listen to, about you know fucking sharpshooters and figure fours oh we'll get that uh, may, may, <laughs> but but you know it uh, ba basically robin had uh she decided to create like this middle woman charity called 15 foundation years and years ago and everybody on the show knew it was a it was a grift from a couple people like people just taking her for a ride and in, so her, her concept was, instead of you giving your money to the United Way, we'll take your money and donate it where we want, but we'll not, maybe not the money, all the money you wanted. Yeah. It's going to get diverted somewhere to a, a Napa Wine Valley tasting or some fucking, you know, art gallery or whatever where my, the guy that I'm trying to fuck, you know, is, <laughs> he's got his shitty uh, derivative art. And... Um, it, it it took about a year, but really spans a little longer than that. And the actual saga is probably six hours or so. But the way Sam and I run, the way we give our commentary, it's probably going to be like six, seven episodes. Yeah, it's it's almost it's almost you guys are uh, are doing uh, the Godfather two in the different <laughs> different <laughs> in different episodes. But I I am it, it's only it's only a handful of shows that I get captivated with and i'm listening to weekly especially if they're that long it's like yourselves uh right. cornet uh, you guys run and I, I i can't pull away and plus i have extra time at work so it's like i, I it's, it's it's my it's my mini series and i love every minute of it you guys do a hell of a job there um thank you sir why podcasting why people ask me this all the time you've been doing this for my, my, i've been doing this for five years and people ask me why do this and i go why because, not? because it's there. Because <laughs> I'm, you, I'm a natural attention whore, so I have to get my outlet out somewhere. Why podcast? Well, let's be honest. This, you know, this is not. I'm a spring chicken when it comes to podcasting. Even though I've been involved involved at the other place, and also with uh, with friends over the years, just kind of doing their podcasts. So, and I'm not afraid to be on a mic because I've been doing, I've been dabbling in stand up for about ten years now. I've hosted an open mic for a number of years as well. And so I'm not, I don't, I, I'm sure I have some kind of ego because otherwise I wouldn't want to do any of this. But at the same time, um, it was more about if you see some, the worst thing you can do, in my opinion, you go to a joint and you have some pasta, right? And you eat it and you go, I can make better than that. But now you got to pay for that fucking thing you just ordered. <laughs> exactly. It, 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 it drives me nuts when I go somewhere and I go, I can make better because I'm the, I'm the idiot. I, I don't blame the restaurant. I blame myself for not knowing better. Right. Should be able to smell it, see it, feel it, and, and just don't go in. 
Um, so with them, I said, I, I know I could do a better job. And I'm sure you felt the same way. You must have heard, you know, fly by night podcast where people use their iPhone and just upload it. And it sounds like, I don't know, fucking, it sounds like we're getting it from radio, hunting rifle. Like getting it from radio free <laughs> Europe or something. <laughs> well, yeah. So, and um, the other thing is you, I imagine you, you start a certain way and you, you can't even listen to your early shows perhaps. I don't know. Ooh, uh, no. <laughs> Do you have any affection for them? Oh, but I, listen, I treat all my episodes like they're my children, but then there's those that should have just been locked up and sent away for 25 to 30 years. Oh. Yeah, my, my, my earlier recordings are, are – um, I, I, I had <laughs> – like I said, it, it, it was almost like if I was connected by a string with two cans and we were just shooting the shit about sports and, 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 and people were basically – uh, trying to put hangers <laughs> to get a better frequency of the show. It's terrible. But yeah. every year, I always, when we we celebrate our anniversary, we always play the early recordings. It's like, wow, came a long way, haven't we? <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, read read your, you know, grade five, you know, essays and, you know, uh, and then read your grade, you know, 10 and just go every every so often like every five years and compare your writing to your writing before uh, or whatever music if you're a musician listen to the earlier stuff you recorded oh and yeah you think I'm, you're, I'm still you could, prolific you could almost get embarrassed <laughs> I'm still prolific I'm a genius what do you mean what talking about <laughs> exactly uh, you, you talked about trying your hand in stand up uh, and, yep. and doing that for a while um, yep I'm, I'm, I'm knocking I'm really knocking on that door I have stuff prepared I, I'm really I'm really ready once this thing opens up the pandemic and all this nonsense is ready I'm ready to just do my one 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 moment of, of an open mic and just to get a feel for it so uh it's addictive do, I, but did, did you see people always there's always those two people who think they're funny and then there's people right. who are told they're funny what what puts you on the stage is, was it one or the other well, I know I'm funny. Uh, I I don't I I know I know it's it sounds it's there's no way to not sound egotistical that way. I'm sorry, but in my house, dinner was never it was it wasn't like it, it wasn't like that sketch on SNL with Will Ferrell where they eating their eating their peas very quietly and start getting angry. It was about making everybody else laugh, right. the best stories, whatever. And so I learned from I had two really funny parents. Dad was like Eugene Levy. He was you know all you know, eye gestures and, you know, uh, he was very quiet. Like he was more reactive. You know what I mean? Mom was, she was, she was just like a, a perfect storyteller, perfect timing. She was, she was incredible, you know? And my brother is super funny and my sister, dark, dark comic, like really dark, darkly funny. And, uh, they loved comedy and we had it in the house. And I used to watch the, the, the tonight show all the time and Letterman and whoever else and Conan later on. So it was, it was a no brainer. And if you're a fan of comedy, almost always, eventually, you're going to try your, yourself. Maybe you think you can do it. Even if you can't, you're going to try. Uh, most people. Uh, but the, then again, there's a shitload of people that that's their number one fear, getting on a mic, talking, public speaking. Ever been to a wedding and you've seen the best man shitting his pants because he's got to make a speech? <laughs> it's it's, it's funny same because, premise. It's funny because as, as although we, we live distant places, I mean, you're, you're originally from, from Canada. Uh, I'm yeah. from the mean streets of Brooklyn, whatever. And um, <laughs> we, in those situations, you still find the uh, 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 like these correlations where you tie yourself with these certain aspects of entertainment. We just, you know, we spoke about Howard. We talked. We spoke about stand up. We were speaking about wrestling. Yeah, we, we, you're almost feel as though that that you're probably the only one in your own circle who's that way i've always felt that way i was the only person who did all these kind of different facets did you have a, a, right. a circle of friends that were into the same kind of thing or was it uh, everybody had a piece of of a certain thing that you were drawn to i was known as well, the renaissance man in my neighborhood a renaissance man in the sense of of basically just being knowing of all of jack of all trades master of none okay. having that kind of uh, sense <laughs> okay <laughs> yeah no like i was i mean if you i wasn't I, there was a couple of sports i was decent at but i wasn't the best sports guy clearly uh, and then and then um when it came to school i was pretty good not amazing but you know not not the the dumbest shithead in the class by any stretch and then but it, but it was music first it was music more than anything along with comedy so I used to DJ when I was in um, 
uh, university as an undergrad. And from music, you know, and, and you do that DJ, for some people, that's not enough. Like all these DJs that are, you know, making, you know, headway and making their name for themselves as a DJ. I have a feeling for a lot of them, it's not enough because unless they're put, making the music, not just playing the music, they're, unless they're actually making their own music, they're never going to be satisfied. You're a comic, you write your own joke. You're a podcaster, you produce your own show, you do the editing, you want to sound how you want to sound. So at the end of the day, it's, you got to be gen, you got to be, an, you got to try the very best to be an original. And that's the only way you're going to get enjoyment out of it, I think. With all those facets of entertainment that was around you in your early years, uh, yeah. what was your first draw in? What was the first, the, your first, um, I guess, uh, inkling of, I, 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 I'm into entertainment. I have to be part of this. Comedy. When you watch Jonathan Jonathan Winters on The Tonight Show next to Johnny Carson, you were in for a fucking treat. If you watch Rickles on any show, which is you're just going to destroy everybody in the audience. Um, if you watched, you know, Froster Brooks playing that drunk every time he had to play a drunk, it was genius. Uh, you know, the Dean Martin roasts and stuff I grew up with. But then, you know, sitcoms, whatever. I know people shit on them now these days. But for us, that growing up, that's that's what we had. There was no Netflix. There was no – I know I sound like grandpa. I get off my lawn. <laughs> but, like, I mean, sitcoms were it. And that's how – those things that lasted, the ones that were really popular, were they all worthy of being popular? The, the really good ones we were growing up with in the 70s, absolutely. Most of them were excellent. Great writers. Did you hear that? Ever hear that story about Red Fox when um, <laughs> Sanford? He was doing Sanford and Son, right? And uh, he got pissed off and he said, "Look, I, I want black writers. I want you to get rid of all the writers. I want black writers." So they hired the black writers, and a lot of I guess they didn't do so well at the read through. So Red Fox kind of threw up his hands and said, "All right, bring me back my Jews." <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were gonna go down the 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 the, the lane of um oh my god what's his name I I remember watching it on uh, Jerry Seinfeld's comedians in the cars getting coffee uh, um, okay. Roy Firestein I believe his name is that was Super Dave Osborne and oh yeah uh, yeah um God what's I his believe, name I believe it rest, is rest in peace yeah, yeah I believe it is Roy Firestein and he was yeah from Curb he um he told the story about Red Fox and how <laughs> he went to Red Fox's house and. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> he had he had dogs who had faces like humans. <laughs> it's like one, of the, it's one of the funniest goddamn stories I've ever heard in my life. But um, for me, when it came to I, that was my first love. I remember even as a kid telling my mother, "I want to be a stand-up comic. I want to be." Comic. When I saw Fozzie Bear do it on Muppet Show, I was like, <laughs> "That was honestly." I always draw to. I said, whenever I saw Fozzie die on stage. And he didn't care. He was oblivious to it. I said, right. I got to do that. I have to do that. <laughs> but it was my love of wrestling as well that drew me into uh, not only the, that sport, but also comedy. Because like you mentioned earlier, you had heels who were able to speak. And then you had yeah. those who were, were just unnatural at being entertaining, but also funny. Uh, Bobby yeah. Heenan. I mean, pfft. The, the man could talk he, he could talk you into the room And then want you to beat the shit out of him Out the room Like it, It's one way or another Incredible um, In Canada Who, who, who were the guys out there Who's who the guys up there in Canada That like, were the marquee guys in wrestling Who was the, the big heels up there Well it was tough to say Because um, there was uh, There's only a really Three promotions That were worth half a shit And that was um, Out in Vancouver There was a good There was a, I can't remember the name of the territory But Almost everybody that was anybody made their bones out in Vancouver, including a lot of big names that people would know, even even the deceased ones more recently, like Animal Hawk. He mm -hmm. was he made he made it really became himself who he was going to be in Vancouver. Um, I'm trying to think uh, Montreal and Toronto. Those were the two main territories. And as we said in the the the, the let's call it the uh, deleted episode, uh, the, um, Montreal, <laughs> the, 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 Montreal lost, the lost episode. <laughs> The Quebec, the Quebec, the Quebec market was the last one to survive the WWF expansion. I know WWE, but right. <laughs> bear with us, guys. I'm, I'm an old fuck. Um, <laughs> when Vince tried to go after Quebec, the only way he could do it in the end was basically undercutting them and going into La Colise, the you know the Quebec 
uh, Nordique's um, uh, arena or the Montreal Forum and, and tying up a long-term deal with them mm -hmm. so that the Montreal promotions had to use smaller venues or crappier venues because they had all the talent. They had, like, Gino Brito ran it. I think I was talking to you privately about it. Andre, uh, Andre the Giant and his manager, Frank Valois, they were the ones that kind of started the promotion or, like, made it more started to make it a little more professional. Right, right. Early, I believe it was in the, late, in the mid, late 60s, early 70s. That's when they started, uh, they were building up the, that promotion up there. Because that was where he did his circle at. He would he would initially start up there. And then uh, yep. Vince Sr. Uh, was put on to him, and that's when he became a big fixture in the Northeast. Huge. And, beca and the, there was just, because the, the fandom was there, there was huge, there was probably no bigger market, even in Ontario, than Quebec. Like Ontario and Quebec, they're two biggest provinces, most populated, most populated provinces in uh, Canada. But there was really only Toronto and Montreal. And when you were in, anywhere in the the province of Quebec, you could draw a crowd, like it, because they were just rapidly f fans of, of wrestling. And so anybody coming in to do their, you know, the way the AWA would send their stars, they all did their runs, right? They, they went to Mid South, they did, you know, Stampede, they went to fucking Texas, they, you know, they did. Uh, they went everywhere, and that kept it fresh. So one of the one of the whole problems there was, you know, as soon as Vince brought out, he made the investment, all the talent just got drained, and he he took them all. I think it kind of destroyed wrestling in a way. Made it good for a while because they were all there, but even he didn't have enough airtime to use everybody properly, nor did he know how to use everybody properly. It's as good. You, as you, we talked about that as well. Yeah, it's good. It's good that you you bring this up because. You know, many wrestling fans, the especially those who aren't uh, historians or or ones who 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 gone through the the books of wrestling, yep. they um they only hear Canadian wrestling and they only think of the Hart family. They don't they they, they right. don't know anything else as the the Rougeaus or um uh, Dino Bravo or those guys who who's, who were basically humongous in that area now in those territories in that country. And then when they came to the states, when Vince brought them in. He just yep. basically just used them for just being Canadian, <laughs> and that's what it pretty much was. Yeah, sadly, sadly, like Dino Bravo. I mean, in mid '80s, he was never bigger than in the mid '80s. But by the late nine, by the late '80s, uh, Vince got the tail end of him. They you really didn't get hit the Dino Bravo that I grew up with because I saw him live in about 1985 and with Rick Martel at, in my hometown, and they were incredible. Dino was a leaner but still strong and a lot younger. I mean, those guys take bump after bump, and you, the, you know, compare certain matches later on in their careers versus, you know, the early on, and it, there's no comparison. You just see better matches when they're in their prime, like any sport. And um, anyway, it was um, it was great to watch because I think I told you they um, Montreal promotion and the Puerto Rican promotion would exchange wrestlers, right? Mm -hmm. So they <laughs> they would import blood first matches, you know, from Puerto Rico that you wouldn't generally see in Canadian television, and uh, it was great. I mean, you know, uh, we we got to see it all. Yeah, I can I can only imagine how over a Carlos Colon was up in, in Montreal and and those kind of a. Uh... Those guys. massive, uh, yeah. Uh, I, I I believe like Bruiser Bruiser Brody would do the turn up there. It was yep. um, it's well known that, and especially when I listen to Cornette, he talks about how that territory was flourishing so much that uh, Vince basically had an eye for it first because he wanted to drain that swamp first. But he felt as though he had to get the, the 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 territories out in the states, you know, piece by piece before he he got absolutely. Into there. Yeah, there's um, yep. I I've always I've always been a fan of the people of Canada when it came when it came to wrestling because they have a genuine love for it. It's 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 almost uh, it's almost as though it's like it's their baseball, it's their hockey, it's their second hockey and such. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, I sent you a, a video the other day uh, of, of Hogan versus Rock at WrestleMania, and yep. the way that that match was set up was basically Hogan heel and Rock being the face, and all of a sudden, that crowd just changed the whole momentum of that match. It, it just mm -hmm. they basically had to call a lot of stuff on the fly because of how it was. Um, you said you've you've seen these you've seen um, matches live yourself. Yeah, the energy that comes from it. What what what's what's the feeling, the sentiment from from Canadian fans as opposed to anywhere else? 
I think part of it has to do with the scarcity. I mean, how many big names travel to all across, you know, the concerts, not every big draw goes to every city in in Canada. But if you got even like an 8,000 seat or a 5,000 seat or in small towns, wrestling would go there, you know. Uh, someone like uh, if you want, I don't know, pick pick a, a you know a pop artist from from the 1980s and 90s. Would they unless it was a certain gate, they just wouldn't appear. Right. But wrestling would play anywhere, 300 seaters. They play. They probably play a phone booth if they had to <laughs> uh, to get over. And um, people would you know I wouldn't say people were desperate for it, but they certainly appreciated it more. And I think with wrestling, especially because it it goes back so far. And everybody has a dad that was into it. Usually, it's from their their parents that they they turn get turned on to it. Really, right. um, I, at least in my in my experience, because most of my friends that didn't like it, their parents hated it. <laughs> so she, my 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 mother found it amusing, so she let me watch it. She she, she liked the pageantry. She loved Elizabeth uh, when uh, she'd see Macho Man, and she knew she she saw it like it was supposed to be a cartoon. Right. Yeah, you know. if if you if you don't wa- if you're not watching it these days, listen, you're doing yourself a favor because it's not a cartoon anymore. Now it's uh, sketch comedy. Now it's uh, uh, SNL. It's Friday. Yeah. It's uh, Second City. It's it's it, that's what it's becoming. I've I've come to to love to loathe it <laughs> because I miss <laughs> my wrestling. I mi- I miss watching wrestling. I love the good versus evil. I love the superhero versus the villain, uh, and, and well, it's it's lost these days. What would you do on a whim? Like you've you've got the keys to the kingdom. What would you do to change it right now if you could? I would go back. Although, uh, as the saying goes, you can't put the toothpaste back in the tube. But I Correct. would I would change the fact that we should live in uh, some era of kayfabe. We can make it work, especially in in, in uh, social media. It, oh yeah, it, it's it's troublesome to see my favorite heel playing video games with the top face of. The promotion. I mean, <laughs> right? Why don't you just play video games with against your your fellow heels? You know, back in the days, yeah. you know, Vince and Vince Senior and and uh, um and Bill Watts. These guys made it. They they made it clear. Listen, you guys don't travel with each other. Everybody s- stays in separate hotels. You guys fly uh, separate flights. You don't associate with each other unless that's the program that works. You could right. actually still make it work, but. I believe now it's one of those things to where it's like, well, everybody knows it's fake now. But it's still like, no, you could still make it seem as though that, yeah, I really don't like this guy. I have a disdain for him. And that's why I think there's loss there. Well, let's be honest. Back in the day, I mean, did you really think that someone, when there, when someone pile drive, when Paul Orndorff used to pile drive someone, that their head actually went straight into something and they didn't get the, you know, they didn't break all their vertebrae? You no, of course not. You it, didn't, right? Like, but you right. still had the so, magic. So you still had that that in your mind. It's like almost finding out that is there Santa, or is right. there not? Is that is, is it still had that doubt? The, the all your favorite wrestlers, all of them, name them. It doesn't matter who they are. They all sold what they were supposed to sell. Right. The ones that the ones that didn't work. I mean, if their gimmick sucked or they couldn't talk or their moves were shit. Who was that one guy? Um, there was that infamous tape that uh, was supposed to be Bret Hart versus. There's this wrestler that they said Tom they Zink. build him up to be the no 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 they built him up to be um, apparently they WWF won't let this footage. Oh, oh no, it, I, I know exactly not... what you're talking about. I'll find it quick. It's actually on the network. It is. They did release it. He was supposed oh, did to be. They? Okay. Yeah, he was supposed to be Tom, the next. Tom Hogan. Some, It's yeah. not Tom Zank. Um, God, it, it's it, killing I, me. I'll find it. my tongue. Yeah. <laughs> but you, you st- and 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 the the real star of that match was Brett. Brett was the star. They just didn't know it, <laughs> apparently. And so, like they, this was supposed to be the next Hogan. He was supposed to be really, I think, the next Ultimate Warrior or something because he had that look. But for some reason, they said he couldn't sell. Um, Tom, what was his name? Tom McGee. There we go. Tom McGee. That's what it is. And poor Tom. I mean, he's still kicking, as far as I know. Uh, and he's done a couple interviews since then. And. Uh, it doesn't seem like he has any negative feelings toward it, but in the wrestling lore, it seems like it's almost like um, like you found uh, a tape that <laughs> I and don't know that shouldn't exist. And exactly, and that's exactly what happened. Once it became a a, a, a find in their in their library, they immediately right. because they knew it was it was, it was that uh, that urban legend that myth, and they had yeah. to put it on the network because they they had to showcase that Brett was the guy. In that match yes. to put it over. Um, speaking of Brett, uh, 
you, 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 I don't know if you want to share the story, but you did tell me okay. that you did have a, a, a heart family story. Yes, I do. I'll tell you what. Uh, my, my brother's wife's, so my brother's brother-in-law um, went to the Stu family dungeon, whatever you want to call it, their school, their academy, and somewhere like, I would, I'm going to say early 90s. And he went with, I can't remember, two grand or something, got him in the door. And they said, sure, we'll teach you how to do it. Now, this kid was slight, um, a bit taller. Than, like, he would have been probably f still too short. I mean, like, barely under six feet. And um, not he didn't have a physique. Could he get one? Who knows? But he didn't look like he would ever succeed. But if you want to go and just learn it, I'm like, couldn't you go somewhere closer than Calgary? <laughs> so he made the trip to Calgary. I don't know how many hours, like 10-hour bus ride. I can't remember exactly, maybe longer. And then when he got there... It's one of the – it's the old-style housing where, you know, I don't know central air or whatever, but you the vents, if you're in a certain room, you can hear people talking in another room. Mm -hmm. And he heard uh, Jim Neidhart very specifically saying – because they were just kind of you – know, they were shining him on. Like, yeah, we'll teach you the ropes. Don't worry about it. You know, just get a good night's sleep. You know, you can sleep over there. No worries. You got some food. You're comfortable. Whatever. And then he heard him definitely saying, we're going to fuck this kid up, and we're going to send him back. <laughs> and they were just going to take the money and ran. So he left. He he just took off because he, he didn't want to be tortured because basically you're saying you're never going to make it. So we'll take the money and, and he, he can run. And, it, and, so, it, and that's exactly the stories that many have said. I mean, we, they, there's uh, Jericho's uh, uh, Lance Storm, even Mark mm -hmm. Henry, who was trained by them as well. It was that story of we're going to stretch this kid. We're going to beat this shit out. I mean, we're going to pretty much – He's not gonna be. He's not gonna cut it. We're gonna take the money and run, and they end, yeah. and they ended up, you know, proving him wrong. Jericho tells a story that he was in a class of about twenty guys, twenty five guys, and they knew yep. that these guys were not gonna make it. And Jericho sure. just wanted to prove them wrong, and he just noticed that day one, ten guys were gone. <laughs> day two, yeah. another four were gone. Day three, another five were gone, and he's yeah, like. Sure. He thought that they were getting snipered, like somebody was just picking them <laughs> off. <laughs> Call of Duty. Right. Well, <laughs> taking them out. Well, well, the thing is, like, it just be gen – like, I understand. At that point when, when my my uh, brother's brother-in-law went, it would have been well after the, the promotion was dead, like we're dying. Right. Uh, because Vince, Vince had already sort of, you know, sewn up everything. And um, when, from what – the stories I've heard over the years from what I've read, most of the Hart family are cockroaches outside of Brett – and Owen. And yeah. I, I, I don't hear good things about almost any of them, including some of the spouses, but I'm sure the spouses, they're, they're, they were dealt a bad hand anyway. But uh, the stories I've heard about Bruce Hart, oh, my God. Listen. Just, yeah, we've vile, had, we've vile had, human beings. We've had, we've had Teddy on, on the show. We have Brett's nephew on the show a couple of times. Okay. okay. And if you haven't been following the news on him, if you haven't seen it, he's that kid is a piece of work. He's a piece but funny because he's very genuinely uh, a, a charming kid. Like he's he's, oh well, he's not much of a kid. That's probably a couple of years younger than us. But he's a charming kid. He's even one of those yeah. that recognize you from meeting you maybe months past. I mean, he'd see me and he'd be like, "Hey guy, how's everything going, mate?" And then it's, it's like, "Oh yeah, you do that podcast, right?" But yeah, and then you see and read the the scumbag shit that he does, and it's like. Yeah. What kind of fucking heart do we have here? <laughs> well, it's it, so well you can you could still be charming and still be a dirtbag. I mean, <laughs> exactly. Ted Bundy, Ted Bundy have charm, right? Uh, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> right. Charm. So, um, but yeah, I, it's it's uh, unfortunately you see, there's not too many. Pardon the expression, but there's not too many straight shooters in the business, and the best ones. Uh, I think you'll hear guys like uh, when you hear that Bobby Heenan shoot from 2002, he'll tell you which promoters were awesome, which ones were great, you know, which guys were good, easy to work with. And you can hear from the shoots who are, who are actually genuinely nice people and who are dirtbags. Oh, man. It's that, pretty, pretty obvious. It, it, God dealt him a fucking terrible hand, man. One of the greatest vocal uh, personalities in the history of not only wrestling but in life that was taken away from him and it, it's like yep. uh it's almost like it's almost like me uh just losing my personality because it would be like me going to the hills of guatemala with robin quivers and 
uh, taking ayahuasca while having some of that um, that that um, <laughs> oh the green drink the, the green drink it, it was helped to to reduce my brain my brain stems I become a seventy nine oh, I, I become a seventy nine like Howard. I got a question for you. Did you see the? Um, let's see, a few years back, but did you see Bobby get into the Hall of Fame? Yes, and it was a roast. And that speech. It became a roast. It did. He was brilliant, even you know, as 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 difficult as it was for him. Right. But by the end, and he was just like Rickles. By the end, when he mentions Monsoon, I I shed right. a tear yeah. because it was so. He just his heart was right on his sleeve, and yeah. uh, you felt it. And that it doesn't. It, I, I'm I'm not an easy cry. But things like that, <laughs> reunion videos on YouTube will do that for me. Um, but uh, but it, it was it was something else to see. That's what I kind of like. That's why these certain documentaries, like the vi the dark side of the ring stuff, fascinating, fascinating stuff. Yeah, Twitter would have been the best platform for him at this moment. I I, I follow a page, uh, Bobby Heenan quotes, and I, yeah. I believe it's I don't know if it's uh, family members or someone who, who's associated with family because. Uh, it was a whole thing to where somebody was fighting to get that, but um, mm -hmm. they they always they they you know every you know weekly or such they put up a Bobby Heenan quote. One of his his quote, <laughs> one of my favorite quotes is where he tells he, he tells a guy in the audience he goes, "How long you been married?" He tells him, <laughs> he says twenty uh, twenty years. He goes, "You know you could have killed him and been out on parole by now." <laughs> <laughs> well bobby if you want anybody who wants check out the episode of politically incorrect with medusa uh i think sting roddy piper and bobby heenan and bill maher is way in over his heels it's no i'm not a huge bill maher fan i've liked his shows over over you know here and there once in a while it depends it always depended who was on but it was about wrestling and is it has it you know does it, the audience get the joke that kind of thing and he was being very condescending to at least three of the smarter people in the business right. at the time, and it was it was totally totally worth a watch. Yeah. He's really intimidating. Yeah, I remember I, I remember Piper had walked out of there and he wasn't he was not very happy about what what, what went down on that on that segment. <laughs> Piper was, Piper was another one. We we talk about Bobby, talk about Piper. Um, yep. Uh, managers of all time. Like who was a who was a who was one of your favorite managers of all time? <laughs> I, I, as I said before, I think Slick was Slick was probably one of my, my favorite, even though I don't know that you could get away with him right now. Oh, no, uh, no, no. In, in, in this era, uh, but um, I think it's got to be it's Bobby the Brain uh, in terms of WWF. But over, um, oh my God, I, I liked um, Jim Cornette actually. I, I thought I thought he had a, a great, uh, just a great. He was just a great mouth. Jimmy the Heart, Jimmy the Mouth of the South was fantastic. Mm -hmm. Fred, classic Freddie Blassie. All the guys, they were all, most of them, um, way better talkers than they were ever wrestlers if they wrestled. And uh, there was nobody better than Bobby the Brain. He's got to be number one. Yeah, I'm uh, Bobby's my number one. Cornette is there as well. I, I told you, you would really enjoy Cornette's podcast because not only yeah. does he, uh, he, he straight shoots on, uh, on wrestling, he also talks politics, and he's just there's no hair on that man's tongue. He lets he just lets it fly. Uh, I've heard him. I've heard I've heard clips. I've heard like people have sent me links and stuff, like yeah. you know, selected bits of of his podcast. But I definitely will check him out in 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 more detail. Yeah. I think in the future. Also, uh, uh, very underrated to me was uh, Paul Heyman. Heyman was a uh, the WCW Deadly Alliance manager. He was that. That that's that snarky New York playboy Wall Street kind of guy, and mm -hmm. he he sold that he he was the essence of New York. Like he he mm -hmm. sold that that whole being. But you know what people didn't realize is like Paulie was a humongous wrestling fan who got through the business sneakily by telling Vince McMahon Sr. that he's this prolific photographer at 15, and he got into the business that way. So he, whenever wow. Vince, and, Vince and the guys, uh, Vince Sr. And, and, and the other promoters were in town, uh, Paulie would take pictures of, of them while they were having dinner at a steakhouse, or they would bring him in and have him um, um, uh, take the photos at the garden and such. And slowly but surely, he, he, he found his way. He made his connections through that way as well. He even got close to, to Dusty when Dusty was getting in the – was coming out of Florida. And um, mm -hmm. <laughs> Dusty tells him during a conference, are you the boy that's supposed to be coming in to take my job? 
All right, you're going to have to sit down and learn here. <laughs> Just sit down and shut up while I speak. <laughs> Dusty's, well, Dusty's I, another guy that I a lot of people don't understand was a great, a great talker as well. I wonder if you could do that these days. I wonder if you could actually um, get in the back door like that. I don't. I. I. It's very. It's. It's funny because years ago, uh, wrestling was the secret, like the secret society. You. You. You weren't supposed to talk um, outside of kayfabe. Everything had to be told, and that like you. You weren't supposed to know the lingo. You're not. You're mm-hmm. not supposed to know what getting juiced means. You're not supposed to know what being green is. They. They. They kept us so that carny talk was kept isolated. Nobody. They didn't even wrestlers didn't even speak that way to their their wives. They didn't even tell right. their, their, their wives about angles or anything like that. And that's another yep. thing that's lost when it comes to the business to where people know way too much. Listen, as yeah. a kid, I, I would pick up a magazine thinking that it was, you know, the WWF magazine or, or one of the uh, PWIs and such. But I actually picked up a dirt sheet mag and I would know wrestlers real names. And I just started little by little piecing things together. But I still didn't yeah. lose. I still didn't. I still was. I, I didn't lose the romance with wrestling, though. Managers is another thing that's lost in wrestling. They don't have as much. Of that's lost. In <laughs> yeah. Well, D- a diva doesn't. A diva can't be a, a manager the way a manager, a like, guy, can be a manager. I don't know. You can't. You, can, you, you can't you say can that about Sherry up. Martel. <laughs> you can say that about well, Sherry I, Martel. I, I I don't know. I mean, uh, <laughs> there's. <laughs> I mean, do we say bring back midget wrestling? <laughs> 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 I mean, if you I bring back my, midget wrestling, you got to bring back midget tossing. I love my little people. I love my my midget wrestling. When you can oh, barely, when you're barely, when you're barely touching the second rope, it's it's you're 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 the you're the mid the mid rope high flyer. I love that. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great expression. <laughs> so, so um. Uh, before before I let you go, uh, because yes. listen, uh, we we're on two timetables. You get me coming in from work. I, last time I got you waking up, it's just it's yep. it's ridiculous the time to. But and I and I appreciate your time. The Howard Not Stern right. thing, the Howard Stern thing. Okay. Um, I had KC on the show, and yep. I tell you, it was um, almost like getting my white whale. I it, it, maybe it was my white guppy. I got I could say that. <laughs> <laughs> but getting KC on the show was so cool to the to the point to where it was like I usually don't mark out but for him I almost felt like I was a teenage girl getting picked up for the prom and he came to the door <laughs> <laughs> and, well, and I, and I, you and could I do a lot worse than KC, I suppose. I guess, but yeah. you know, but you know, without, you know, of course, you know, the big big names or whatever. Who, who, what is the what is the the, the the guest that you're looking for to, to 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 get on the show? What what big what big name you think could will 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 play with you guys? Truth be told, we've 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 uh, Sam and I have discussed it a lot, and uh, there are a lot of the ex comics that have been in. That's that's okay. That's all well and good, but they never actually worked for the show. Most of them, you know, were in the, on the periphery, or they knew, you know, Jackie or Artie or the you know Sal and Richard. Personally, my ultimate. Uh, interview would be Artie because of how verbose he can be, but also how articulate he can be when he wants to be. Uh, and if you ask him the right questions, Radio Gunk had him and they fuck. It was a train wreck of an interview. It was yeah. shit. And um, it, we it was just they fanned out and they couldn't they didn't have any control over it. And this was right before he went into the Husqvar. Right. Um, now he's been out. Uh, we're making inroads when we do one. If, if we get if and when we get him, it's going to be great. I would love Vinny Favalli. Oh, that's a good one. Yeah, that's another uh, one. Uh, I would absolutely love. Um, God, what's his name? I would love. Uh, it's it's tough to say. I was gonna say I, I would love Jackie if I could fill him with a truth full of truth serum. Um, yeah, I, I, I just, want real Jackie. I don't want ass kissing Jackie. I love everyone. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I want yeah, real I Jackie. I don't. I don't. I don't need the old hippie bullshit. Right. I want him to tell what he only tells when he feels like venomous. Um, I got I bought his book. It was okay, but I don't want to hear about his own upbringing. I want to know about the business. I right. want to know what it was like all around the show. But uh, Artie would be the the absolute white whale right now. Yeah, uh, yeah. I, I it, it's tough for, for this podcast because I always would have to find someone who's tied into wrestling to talk. Sure. Like this it's my it's my back door. It's like we had Abe Cannon who worked on um, Howard One Hundred and One. He was the one that yep. brought in Evil Dave and such from out of Chicago. 
So yep. it, it, it was it was cool because I was able to talk the Howard business with Plus Wrestling. So I think the next one for me that I'm working on, which would probably piss a lot of Stern fans off because they'll be like, ugh, why him? Would have to mm-hmm. be Shuli because Shuli's a big wrestling fan, but he's mm-hmm. also you know tied to the show. And now, uh, since I guess he's uh, in limbo uh, or, or he's actually I, um, cut, ca- he's Alabama. casted off. Yeah, he's casted off from the show. I think this might yeah. be a time to get him. So that that's my that's my you, next poaching. <laughs> but do you want do you want Shuli dishing or do you want him for strictly just whatever a freestyle interview, maybe talk wrestling and then throw a bit of the stern stuff? I in? I want to do I want to do the um. I want to do the, uh, the the what is it the the cat I want to cast the the bait catch him bait catch and switch release. I want to catch him no I want to catch and release I want to grab oh, okay. him talk a little something get him comfortable release him back to the wild and then bring him back so he can get real comfortable that's what I was really working sure. with Casey because you heard the KC interview KC was actually very it was, it was open he was very open you did a, you guys did a great you did a great job with him and um, that that revelation about how much he got paid as a producer. Uh, even as an associate producer on a one of the biggest radio shows of all time is disgraceful. Right. Really, di- like just sickening. I was shocked but, by uh, that. Uh, yeah. We're, uh, you had to be like, there's n- that number made no sense. Yeah, it was. It was. Um, it was one of those. It was one of those conversations that I figured that just since I heard the Gunk interview with him, it was. Like, <sighs> Come on, like you, like we said earlier, I can do it better. <laughs> it's like I can cook this better. <laughs> Absolutely, like, this burger sucks. I need, to, I can do this better. <laughs> Close my eyes, I could make this burger taste better than that that horse shit. <laughs> so with 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 him, it would like you have to understand, guys. Like it was two thousand early two thousands. Howard was still in his. You know, and his, he wasn't plateauing yet. He was making millions and millions of dollars. And he was allowing his 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 friggin' executive producer, guy that was producing bit after bit after bit, a lot of them were fake, mm-hmm. absolutely, to be starving in a friggin' New York apartment, not paying him even enough to be at the poverty level. Uh, you know, it was it's embarrassing. Uh, I, I think if I'd known that um, at the time, I probably would not have wanted to be a fan. I probably would have turned off the show. I, I I told you guys I said you know I said uh, there's certain guys I would love that for you guys to get like Scott Einzinger or Scott DePace oh, or uh, Doug Gustin, but one guy yeah. that I would think that you I would love to see if he if he could if you could get him and maybe he could be a little more honest would be Tom Chiasano. I would love to see if you guy because Tom although corporate I would love to hear the stories of how much Howard really put the screws to him. Oh God, we'd we'd have we'd, we'd absolutely need um, truth serum for Tom. He did a thing for, called for uh, Al's boring podcast. I don't want to plug another podcast that isn't ours, <laughs> but or or yours. But um, he did a series of interviews. This guy Al's boring boring podcast and Tom that he did one with um, what's his name the uh, the reporter um, that left uh, Steve <laughs> the one Steve not Steve Kingston uh, not sure what's his name Steve uh, they called him. His, his 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 nickname unfortunately was Mud for a very yeah, yeah, dirty yeah. Oh, awful my. reason. Somebody somebody's was Langford. Langford. Steve, Steve Langford. Langford. Somebody I know somebody was yelling at the while listening to this. He was fan. He was fantastic. He goes. He goes. Uh, he he explained his departure from the show and how he didn't get along with Robin because she called herself a newswoman. Oh, uh, I love <laughs> that. Oh, I love that segment. I love that. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, uh, that's that's a, a one where he did a decent job with Tom, but I don't know if you'd get. The full, the straight dope from him uh, as much as you'd want, but I, I absolutely would uh, love to hear it, no matter what happens if you get him. Yeah, it would. It would it, that's that's the that's the that's the the, the next the next reel in. Uh, he's been he's been ignoring uh, messages for now, but I'll get him. I I have I have kind of an in because I know a friend of his, so I might be able to work that. Hey, I'm like you guys. Hey, we know people. We know certain people. We know people. We know people. <laughs> I hear things. I hear some things. Before I let you go, um, top yeah, three sure. top three comedians of all time. Okay, uh, I'm gonna go with Richard Pryor for number one. Uh, Rickles number two, and number three for uh, for the fact that I listened to the day the laughter died incessantly and can recite it from every single bit from it. Uh, Andrew Dice Clay. Oh wow, Clay. I saw him. Yeah. I saw him one time in the city, and he was a full gimmick. I mean, hilarious. He just he must have just did a a, a run in, in Central Park, and he was sitting yeah. down, and he just had a, and he was full gimmick. Had the 
had the the glasses. He had you know. Oh yeah. The the, the plugs. <laughs> it was still and they, but it was just sitting there, <laughs> and then, and I just gave him hey dice and he just gave it, and he, he gave the look hey and it just, that was it that's all he gave was, For, hey that, that that's what you want hey uh, <laughs> my mine uh mine is uh, Carlin is one I'm a big Carlin yep. guy. Um, okay. I said something. I mentioned earlier, like Eddie and such, but who else has been growing on me uh, and going into ranks has been Lewis Black. Lewis Black is a guy that, uh, not only in his politics and his in his political rants and in his comedy, but also his mm-hmm. observations in society and such has been mm-hmm. angrily hilarious. I, 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 mm-hmm. That and uh, I'm a Burr guy. I, I I love Bill Burr, but I got Bill. I, Bill. We could do a Bill whole podcast about that, but yeah. we'll have to do a segment on comedy next yeah, time. Yeah, yeah. But um, it's 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 been a pleasure as always. We'll 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 have to deep dive more uh, when when I do my offshoot uh, with you <laughs> the other podcast when we're not talking wrestling. But uh, sounds good, sir. Jim, let everybody know where they can get you and where they can find. Uh, quite frankly, uh, Halverson Podcast. You can find us on Podbean, Player FM, uh, Spotify now. We got Pocket Cast. Supposedly, we're on Apple Podcasts, although I'm not responsible for that. <laughs> I don't know how that happened. I guess it just went in through the, the other. And um, we're on YouTube as well. We got a, a channel, a dedicated channel. And I would recommend uh, subscribing to the YouTube channel anyway and then our Facebook group because sometimes we do video walkthroughs and we'll, the audio version goes into the podcast as well. But for obvious reasons, if you want to, you, you really want to see those. So YouTube's the place to go for them. Yeah, that's but the, otherwise, uh, yeah, Podbean and uh, look us up. Quite frankly, a Howard Stern podcast, folks. That's the that's the real the main reason why I'm upset when I'm not off on Sunday nights because I want to sit and do the walkthroughs. And when I do get the chance, I'm like, yes, I'm here, guys. <laughs> like, I'm here. Yes. <laughs> Tell me a day when you can do them uh, if you if you're able, and I'll see if I can manage to get one on that day for thank, just for you. Thank you, sir, and thanks for your time, and give my love to the ladies as well. You guys are doing an amazing job over there, and thanks for your time once again. No problem, brother. And Take this time, care. I'm going to make sure I save it properly, and it's going to be decoded properly. <laughs> <laughs> you got it. Have a good one. Have a good one. Turnbuckle tabloid. Three, two, one. Tabloid.